What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's time for that Culture for the Streets podcast. Hosted by Mafia and Paint, man. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the notification bell. Do not leave up out the trap till you've been served and we serve it every day. It's no days off in the trap. The doors is always open. Anyway, let's get right back into it. What's been going on with the atmosphere in Houston with the death of take off and the involvement alleged involvement of mob ties and you know what's going on with jay prince jr and 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 and, and the old man jay prince senior now it's been a long legacy rap a lot that had a long legacy mob ties is trying to carry that legacy but it's been some bumps in the road and it's been a lot of things that's coming out you got duke 093 from chicago that was at the dice game and there's plenty of video that surfaced over the internet about duke the jeweler at this dice game is plenty of footage of him in elevators hotel lobbies all kind of things going on with that right and it's questions in the air because a lot of people not really talking about that is okay we all know he was robbed and killed after the dice game now we seeing a lot of blogs, we seeing a lot of news, we seeing a lot of people putting things together as far as that situation go as well. So in certain footage, you see Jay Prince Jr. talking to Lil Cam of Mob Ties, and you see Lil Cam. He ain't on gamble time. If you really look at his demeanor and you really look at his facial expression, you really look how he moving in there, in that atmosphere, in that environment while niggas is gambling, he really like on demon time. So this goes right back to Mob Ties once again because you got Boosie in the building, you got Finesse Gang in the building, you got people that's in the building when Duke the Jeweler is in the building. Once again, I said this in a video before, Duke the Jeweler was placing himself amongst a lot of niggas that had money because he was a jeweler. That's networking. So whether he came in there to spend money, if he won the money, lost the money, it don't really matter because he came to network with niggas that got money. So he could end up with the clientele out that room, you know what I'm saying, from being a jeweler. Because, you know, the streets go support the jeweler, the jeweler game, especially when the, the jeweler come from the street. But... We see him in a lot of footage where we hear a female behind the camera. We never see this female. Who is the female? We don't know. It's never came out. It's not surfaced yet. But it's also a dude in the back of some of these videos that's with him everywhere he go. So Duke the Jeweler apparently wasn't by himself. Now the question is, is the dude that's with Duke the Jeweler with him? Or was he put, or was the dude put on Duke the Jeweler to, to, to hold him down while he moving around Houston? In between this time between the time he moving around and the time he at the dice game and leave so if he is part if he moving around with duke the jeweler how come we ain't heard nothing about something happening to him and we ain't heard nothing about the female neither so apparently you know what i'm saying this had to be like a back door because if you with somebody the whole time if you with people the whole time and then it's a window for you to be robbed and killed. It smelled very bad because I'm saying like, where was the other people at? So you mean to tell me you had a female with you all night and this bitch disappeared the moment you finna die? You mean to tell me you had a nigga coming behind, coming indoors behind you everywhere you went and he knew exactly when not to be around you when it was time when, when, when niggas was gonna come for you. This don't make no sense, and it don't, and it and it definitely don't look good for mob ties because this was a, a first of many events that happened at a dice game involving mob ties orchestrating the event. So clear as day, you see everybody in the room. Who you see in the room that stick out the most? J. Prince Jr. We all know that the protocols around J. Prince Jr. and the Prince family can't nobody had no weapons around him unless you are 
a certain status of celebrity and that's your security you see what i'm saying other than that ain't no weapons around so like i said before when you attend these dice games and you really an outsider is that putting you on the fish hook because when you go in there and you showing the, the room that you getting this money and you ain't no celebrity you just a street nigga. so your status is gonna go overlooked by a lot of people because the value okay you a street nigga having some money but when you come in the room and you a jeweler and you wearing a million dollar worth of jeweler and really don't nobody know you like that people looking at you like fool whether you know it or not so was he safe the entire time he was there or was they just rocking him to sleep that's what we call it in ohio rocking a nigga to sleep because in ohio you can do time you can do 10 years with a nigga in the penitentiary y'all become close as hell you get out nigga y'all both doing what y'all do and this nigga smoke you over some bread a nigga a, a fake with you for a decade to get in position enough to the the owl pull you like like he did mitch you see what i'm saying and to me this seemed like the same situation you got this nigga from another state which be in chicago illinois in houston texas he's shining we don't know if he checked in to rap a lot. We don't know if he checked in with Mark Todd. So he just pull up with Boosie he had a dice game and he having more money than a lot of niggas that supposed to have some status to him. You see what I'm saying? And everybody seeing this nigga do what he do. He's shining, he glowing, and he went in bread. And then he decided to leave and get smoked. Niggas was plotting on him the entire time. Now, who was plotting on him? We, we'll never know. But this takeoff situation that's going on involving mob, mob ties and jay prince jr and how it's all coming out the takeoff situation is exposing a lot of things and the takeoff situation is also making us look back at the duke 093 situation like hold on was this a back door was this a setup did they rock did they rock cuz to sleep because this looked like they rocked him to sleep and 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 then for a street nigga, you post that you supposed to be able to be aware of your surroundings. Your instincts supposed to kick in. Your shark instincts are supposed to kick in when you amongst the sharks. Just because you a shark and you amongst sharks, you ain't that don't mean you're supposed to be comfortable. You, you see what I'm saying? And 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 I think Duke 093 was a little too comfortable to have to be worth that much and to be moving around with that much money and jewelry on them at the same time and the results of that when you in another nigga city your muscle ain't never gonna really be thicker than the city you in muscle if you dealing with people that got that type of status and got that type of muscle behind them especially if they got some money too you see what i'm saying and 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 this is something that in, in, in the midwest let's just be honest you can have a plug and you can eat with this plug for years. One of his people trying to get on to save him from having to put a nigga on, it feeds you to the wolves. Meaning it's just gonna be a day to just, you know, everything normal. But then you show up, y'all do what y'all do, and a nigga backdoor you and, and, and you get robbed for the money and the pack. Nigga feeds you to the wolves. Now his people on, he ain't had to give him nothing. All he had to do is feed him, give him a lick. You see what I'm saying? You from out of town, so he ain't got to really worry about running into you because the chances of you just coming back to that town trying to, you see what I'm saying? Slim to none. So now all he got to do is go out there and if you only got clientele, it's really not affecting him like that. So you got to beware of being rocked to sleep. And I feel like Duke 093 got rocked to sleep. Now, the whole thing about the getting rocked to sleep and i feel like why boosie went public like that talking about duke jeweler being murdered and how he handled no involvement because i feel like boosie know how it was set up and how it went down but he ain't had no involvement i don't think his people had no involvement neither he was just there and just because of boosie reputation he reaped the benefits of the motherfucking media Whereas we seeing, we starting to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Quavo lost his cut, his nephew behind really nothing. He wasn't in no dice game. 
and because a nigga having pride because he feel like you shouldn't be talking to a nigga like you talking to a nigga look what happened and then a nigga really show his face to the point where even after the moment them little words made that nigga still feel like it's fuck you because he walked past the nigga that they didn't have a relationship for a long ass time with you see what i'm saying and then not only that you go as far as to drake jazz prince and and, and jay prince jr unfollow Quavo. Now, Wack 100 put this in the air and he put this out and he got the proof, whatever. He screenshotted it. And then when they put it on Clubhouse and discussed it, it got in the atmosphere and they got it got back to them and evidently they refollowed Quavo. So it's like, look what's going on. It shouldn't be no that's like some of the most childish shit anyway, unfollowing the follow like like when you cut your phone off, nothing on your phone exists. You see what I'm saying? So all that unfollowing that shit corny to me you see what i'm saying but y'all celebritizing y'all doing shit like that like why would you unfollow quavo what the fuck did quavo do to drake so it's making everybody look fucked up then jay prince makes this statement talking about if you got anything to do with it you can't hide behind me and with me and beside me but nigga your son is involved nigga niggas that was rocking with your son is involved so what you saying, nigga, you ain't got nothing to do with it and your son can't run to you, nor the niggas that he with. Man, it's a lot about to come down with this, man. And this shit, if it's not a Rico case, I smell murder charges and shit and all kind of shit coming down on the but reason I say this is like going to be a Rico because they've been chasing after Jay Prince Sr. for decades. And this man been slick and sly and smart enough and corporate militant enough to stay above ground, get his money, live, let his reputation live how it live, and and sustain his position. Whereas he give position to his sons, and they out there finna fuck up his whole entire fucking legacy. And if niggas don't think that Jay Prince Jr. ain't fucking up his father's legacy, you snort cocaine. I would just like you to know that shit because nigga this ain't how you move especially when you come from polishness when your pops is polished regardless whatever he did in the street he did it in a polished manner to where oh, it's like an urban legend to us we never heard about it. but you want us to see everything you fucking do nigga you got reckless niggas around you you doing shit like you live in the movies I mean, who the fuck you you know john Gotti went to jail nigga fuck is you talking about Not only that, rest in peace, Chucky Trill. For those of you who don't know who Chucky Trill is, he was killed in Atlanta, and he's from Houston. Now, leading up to this, we've been seeing stuff happen. Now, look at Takeoff. It's gone. Now, I'll explain this in another episode. If you go back a couple episodes and look. When somebody that's dominant come from your city and they get killed in another city, it's natural. It's a natural self-hate that that city develop for that other city that that person that's love from this city died in. So it might not be a whole bunch of public Atlanta niggas like, oh, nigga, fuck Atlanta, you know, fuck Houston and all this other shit. But please believe them niggas in the street got the attitude of a, we don't give a fuck about no Texas nigga right now. And I'm a street nigga, and I understand that because the Midwest different. We aggressive, we don't like each other, and it's fuck everybody except us. And that's how we is towards each other, nigga. If one of us from my city go to another city and get smoked, nigga, it's forever up. You come to this county, nigga, you better not even sneeze, nigga, you get smoked. That's just how it's going. You got a problem with the whole city, nigga. Because the, the, it's a city, it's a town respect, man. It's town business. So if a nigga with some type of status gets smoked in your city, you got to be looking forward to that. So yes, this is going to build a bridge of chaos where Atlanta niggas going to feel like 
Texas niggas better not come over here. And it's fucked up because it ain't got nothing to do with Atlanta versus Texas. Uh, Atlanta niggas just died in Texas. But don't forget, these streets gonna choose a side, just like they did when Pac and Biggie. That shit was going on. East Coast slid with Biggie, and West Coast went with Pac as they should have because them the people that got the status from their side and they represent in their side. It's the same shit. So if niggas don't think Atlanta niggas gonna have an attitude like this towards Houston niggas, y'all got shit fucked. Up. And not to even mention just all of that. Because this finna be a lot of shit coming down. And we finna see who's sturdy and who dirty. We finna see all of this. This is shit finna open up the floodgates with what's going on in that environment with, with mob ties in Houston. We finna see a whole lot of shit happen. And in the process, you got a rising star being finessed two times that's mob ties affiliated that went public over social media on live to get people to understand that yo i'm part of mob ties and just because shit hitting the fan i'm not jumping out the whip so i'm not gonna look at finesse like he dumb he just has to move right because it's a lot of shit that's gonna start happening and when you ride with some people you inherit the problems that come with them people. That's just, and, and Finesse ain't having no problem. So to inherit this issue, you did. It's just a good thing Finesse ain't from Houston. He from Memphis. So he tied to a different politic, but you just, you got a business issues with people that that's in a chaotic situation right now. And he just really showing loyalty. Finesse two times just showing loyalty. And a lot of niggas in the industry, a lot of niggas in the street don't got no loyalty. So we looking at Finesse, the people that ain't from the street looking at Finesse, because I'm not looking at him like that. I'm a street nigga, so I understand what he doing is loyalty. These niggas came home, this nigga fresh out the feds, these niggas led him straight to a bag, to some more bags, to some millions. He's showing loyalty. That's what he supposed to do. He supposed to be a loyal dude to some people that changed his life. He just got to move right. He's still on federal paper, and them folks going to hound him, trying to get around them, and it's, it's just weird. And, and anybody that know how that go with the Fed and them little boys, it's a little bit different than your local police department, so don't think this is not a serious issue. This shit is serious. We dealing with celebrities. So I just hope Finesse two times can keep up what he's doing and keep leveling up and keep progressing in the game and change the vibes and the atmosphere. Because right now, man, it's so chaotic. Being a rapper is dangerous, nigga. You better go get you a bulletproof car before you buy you a fucking wraith or you're a fucking idiot. Let me just say that before I get up out of here because a lot of rappers is dying and all they got to show for a lot of shit is a half million dollar worth of jewelry, a million dollar worth of jewelry. I'm not going, nigga, before I spend a million dollars on jewelry, I better have a million dollar house and my parents better be put up right too before. If I got enough to do all that and put around my neck and on my body and risk my life because niggas is outside trying to kill you about that jewelry. I don't see niggas outside dying because they just bought two houses. I don't see niggas dying because they just bought their mama and dad a new house, sat their grandparents in a new house, and built them a house from the ground. I don't see niggas dying from that. Because you can't wear your house on your neck, nigga. We die about looks, nigga. Niggas dying over looks. Niggas is getting at you about looks. In this case with Takeoff, it wasn't about looks. It was just about a heated moment in a, a situation. And niggas went. For they side, and in, in, in the process, he lost his life. So rest in peace, take off. You see what I'm saying? It's unfortunate. It's fucked the whole situation. But don't think this shit is a sinkhole and it's just gonna get covered up. No, nah, it's a whole lot of shit that's about to spill on the ground about this shit. Stay tuned. It's time for that coach for the streets, hosted by Mafia and Paint. Man, hit that like button, subscribe.
to the channel. Ding that notification bell. Stay tuned. Don't leave up about the traps that you've been serving. Sir.